Thank you, Tessa. It's great to have you back at the Getty. Okay, let's turn to your film, Pan Amicus, commissioned by the Getty Museum on the occasion of the 20th anniversary of the Getty Center. Tell us about the title, Pan Amicus. You know, the whole film is framed around the idea of Arcadia and, you know, John Paul Getty's original passion, you know, or, which is the originating passion of this entire museum, which is his love of the uh, Greek and Roman artifacts. I made it both a Greek and a, a Roman type, you know, so it's mixed Latin and Greek, you know, Pan, Greek, Amicus, Latin, Roman, friend. So, but it's also referenced to Pan as the friend and helper in, um, which is, you know, a reference to, in a way, what the Getty has been for me when I first came here, friend and helper. What I decided to do, you know, in, for the originally 20th and now 25th anniversary, because it's taken so long to finish, <laughs> um, was to, you know, to do something with, the, with a very particular landscape here, which is, struck me when I first arrived in, uh, at the Getty, which is this Mediterranean landscape here, which is very specific and this sense of being elsewhere. I decided to make a, a, f a film, and you kindly authorised the borrowing of certain objects in the film, uh, classical Greek on Roman sculpture. So there was uh, the head of Hermes and uh, two feet fragments, which you know we placed in the landscape. Um, everything is shot here, but it gives the idea that it's shot in ancient, you know, in Arcadia. Let's go back to the beginning and the, and the title itself. Uh, it was inspired by a chapter in The Wind and the Willows, and the title of the chapter is called The Piper at the Gates of Dawn. It's mole and rat going upstream trying to find the baby otter, who's called Portly. And Portly's been missing for a long time, and the, the father otter is very anxious. And they go, and it's at, at night, and they go up the weir and eventually they they feel entranced by some presence and they go into a, a sort of glade and they they see pan and they, and they hear him first the pa the pan pipes and then they see the god pan with his horns and his you know goat half goat body um you know, and everything has gone quiet, and the, the sun has not yet risen, and at his feet, at his uh, horns, cloven feet, lies uh, the blissfully sleeping portly. And they are so in awe, and it's all about the fact that, because Pan, which is something that's interested me for a very long time, is, you know, the god, great god Pan was, is this kind of presence in the landscape, which, in, it, which brings about awe, and you know, and he gave his name to words like panic. It's not exactly panic, but it's a sort of unutterable fear that you have in some landscape situations in the wilderness. I don't know if you've ever felt that, mm. sort of a chill, a sort of, and that is the presence of the great god Pan in the, in the wilderness. Mm. And when I was in Delphi years and years ago, I, I wrote this little thing about feeling the presence of Pan. And I was writing in relation to Cy Twombly at the time, because he did this beautiful drawing called Pan which is this, you know, this smear and this rhubarb, and it was the opposite between the wild, the wild, and and the cultivation. And um, so, I am a huge lover of the presence of Pan, and Pan means all in Greek, in contemporary Greek, and you know, it, it gave its word name to, you know, as well, pandemic, as well mm. as pandemonium, panic, or, or you know, panorama, all these things. I love this. He's a demigod. He's not even a, a, a fully fledged. God. So this chapter was about feeling, you know, they, they see Pan and then he gives them the gift, of, the gift of forgetfulness so they don't remember. They just felt like they'd had mm. some sort of experience and they rescue the, the, the baby otter. So there is something here that is a bit otherworldly. You know, you are almost in the realm of the gods, <laughs> slightly. That's how I felt. When you asked me to do something in to celebrate this Getty Center. It was, you know, it's not an easy commission, Jim, actually. I decided to film, make a film where the Getty doesn't sh exist at all. <laughs> so I think you were a bit confused by that. <laughs> Trusting, I think is the word. Trusting. Trusting. Yeah. But it's, it's actually 
celebrating it in a deeper way. Yeah. Now the film opens with a haunting sequence of a supermoon, as I think it was, rising in the west. It begins and ends, because yeah. this is really, really important part about its structure. The film is cut as a, a film loop, which means there's no beginning and end. You know, the, the film is dawn. You know, it goes from darkness and dawn. So the moon rises. It could also rise in the evening, which is actually what it did rise. So the first frame and the last frame, there's a hard cut and we sellotape it. So it just goes round and round. So there is no beginning or end. But what it is, is the, the dawn, it's the rising of the dawn. Um, and then the, you know, the light appearing on, on, the, on the objects in a way in this, you know, Arcadia. What about the soundtrack? Uh, it's well, the so soundtrack is, is a total fiction, and that's the only thing that's not recorded here. Um, Describe it for us. Well, it was trying to imagine what Arcadia sounded like, to some extent. The dry wind, uh, leaves and trees bustling, and s almost like bones scraping against each other. Well, when I filmed here, um, it was an incredibly windy day. It was also very green because it had just been after the rain. So it was the location was confused anyway because you didn't wouldn't expect to see so much grass. Mm. The, the Getty Villa, which is where we filmed it. So what I wanted to do was to create a fictional realm, and and you know anybody who works with film and image and sound knows that the fiction of sound is. I mean, sound is generally a fiction in film in cinema. You know, especially with uh, film because film is mute and then you bring sound to it. Um, whereas digital, you take, you know, the effort is greater because you have to take sound off it right. to bring in the illusion of, of, of the fiction of sound. Yeah. The sound is a total fiction, and it is the sound as much as I could of Acadia, which means that I imagine that the head of Hermes was lying, and Hermes is also the father in some tellings of Pan. So hearing the, you know, a goat, a herd of goats, tethered next to the, um, they don't, you don't see them of course, because it's shot here. You don't have goats, you have deer, you have birds. Yeah. It's an imagination. What was it like to film with uh, these original antique objects uh, in the landscape? Can you describe for us how you used them? Because it wasn't just that they were sitting there, they were propped in particular ways for particular purposes. Well, it was like they were found there, you know, like they'd always been there. It's more of a a shock to Getty conservators, I think, to see them with little flies walking across them. <laughs> These, they're, you know, 2,000 years old or long more, I guess, are they? Yeah. Some of them. Yeah. So, uh, and just to, you know, they probably were found where they were found was exactly where they return briefly yeah. in the film. And it was nice to be able to um, embed them there so they looked like they had always been there and they were just um, but that was the center, uh, central tenet of the whole film, was your, the objects, of course. Yeah. The, it turned out that the deer played a, a very important role in the film. Mm -hmm. um, and the deer were here on site at the Getty Center, and they were on the western side of the sloping hill. But there was this, I remember the moment in which we came across the deer, because they, they, weren't, in, they weren't intentional. It wasn't like we let the deer out of, a, out of the back end of the truck. Yeah. Tell us about that. They were just here as you rise from the, come up from the south gate. We suddenly saw this um, herd of deer. And what's really important about the film is that I, I filmed quite a lot, but if, if the Getty Center appeared in any way, I couldn't use it. So all that, that beautiful shot with the deer, the just, just outside of frame is the whole, you know, is the Getty, mm -hmm. basically. So I had to be quite rigorous about not, you know, any, and I lost some beautiful shots because there was a tiny bit of Getty in there. So, but yeah, we had to just stop. And, and I remember y you were there directing traffic and, and people were very affronted. And then they saw it was you. It was very funny. <laughs> <laughs> they said, what are you doing? Oh, hello, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> it was nice to do that. And, it, you know, they are. Um, we saw quite a few deer at dawn. I think they own the place. They take over at dawn yeah, here. Yeah. And then they're gone when everyone else, the scholars arrive and the staff arrive, but I think they, I, I mean, that's what I meant about, that's what's so profoundly connective about this landscape and, and that 
and the Getty Center is that, that you have this other element, which is the, this kind of the creatures that inhabit mm -hmm. here. How long is the film? 31 minutes. Yeah. It was shot in 16 millimeter. Yep. What draws you to 16 millimeter film stock? Well, I, I mean, I use film, and 60 millimeter is um, my medium mainly because of I show them as film in, 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 in galleries and museums. You know, the, the next gauge up is 35 millimeter, but it's impossible to show 35 millimeter, you know, films that often in museums and galleries because they're just such, the projections are much bigger. So 16 is a much more kind of a smaller, more local medium and very portable and I've been working with it since I was a student. Yeah. Now you're English born and live in Berlin. But I will always be coming back because I mean I work here, I, I work here with you know the lab in Photochem in Burbank, I, you know I, that's my only lab so I will always have to come back and I, lo I love it here, I have a studio here, definitely I will always hope to come back here. Well we hope you'll come back and stay long. We yeah, think of you as a Getty artist now. Well, we thank you for all that you're doing with the Getty and for the Getty. Well, thank you also mm. for allowing me. <laughs>